Hello students and welcome to this calculus lesson. In this video and in this uh, two-part video, we're going to be looking at the intermediate value theorem. In this first video, we're going to be looking at how do we get the definition of the intermediate value theorem. And then in part B of this video, we're going to be looking at specific problems concerning the intermediate value theorem. So let's get into it. So we're going to be studying over the course of this year several theorems related to calculus and discoveries within calculus. And the first theorem that we're going to be looking at is the intermediate value theorem. What I like to do is I'm going to start with a graph. So what I'm going to graph is some random line happening. All right, there's that nice curve that we've got. And over here I'm going to do, okay, here's A and here's B. And uh, so right here, this is the y value for that, we're gonna call f of a. And then over here, the y value for that, we're going to call f of b. Now let's get into writing out um, what the intermediate value theorem says. If f of x is continuous on a to b. So this is gonna be a huge idea, is that the function needs to be continuous first. And y is in between f of b or it could be looking like this so if y is in between f of a and f of b in either direction there exists one value we're going to call that value x equals to c in between somewhere on a to b such that f of c equals y. So let's add that stuff, let's add all the information here into this graph here. Okay, so if f of x is continuous on the, on the part from a to b, which is happening, right? We can see that f of x is continuous this entire time. No matter what might be happening here, as long as it's continuous, and um, the y value that we're gonna be looking at. So the y value I'm gonna put here. So the y value needs to be between f of a and f of b, okay? So between those two y values, the one that we're gonna be looking at needs to be in between both of those. And it could be either direction, um, you know, if f of b was above f of a, that would also be okay. So there needs to be at least one value where x is equal to c in between a and b. So let's put C in between A and B, put it right there, such that the value of F of C is equal to the Y value that we were looking at. And we can see here that F of C, F of C is equal to the Y value that we have situated here. What's going to really help us is seeing this in action. So let's get to it. So let's look at this graph over on the left and let's answer our question. Is there a value of C um, in between negative five and two such that F of C equals two? So let's see, is there a value between negative five, so right there, and positive two, so right there, um, where the function is equal to two? So two, is there a point in between those two lines that I drew? Well, yeah, right there, it works. So yeah, there is. And so uh, C is somewhere in between negative five and negative four. We could probably say negative 4.5. So somewhere between negative four and negative five. Okay, so we know that the value is there, that it does exist. But does the intermediate value theorem guarantee such a value? Why or why not? So let's go through a part of our intermediate value theorem. So we're gonna say no in this case. And the reason we're going to say no is because in between those two bars that we put down, in between negative five and two, the first part of the intermediate value theorem states that the function needs to be continuous. And we have that break that's happening there. So our function is not even continuous, which means the IVT cannot be used in this case. So we're gonna say the IVT does not guarantee a value of C on negative five to two because F of X is not continuous on this interval. So 
So now let's look at the same problem, but we're going to change where we're looking. So is the value of C between negative one and five? So here's negative one right here and positive five. And so like our graph could keep going such that F of C equals two. So this Y value of two. Well, there isn't even a value between negative one and five where the Y value comes out to be two. So no is going to be our answer to the first question. So does the intermediate value theorem guarantee a value of C in between negative one and five such that the value at C comes out, the Y value at C comes out to be two. And we've already said no, but here's why. So no, because F of C equal to two is not between F of negative one and f of five. So f of c equals two, so two needs to be in between f of negative one and f of negative five. If both of those things are, if it's not in between those two values, then we can't guarantee that a function exists. Could a value happen there? Yes, a value could happen there, but it's not guaranteed until we actually graph it out. So to recap this, we want to say what two conditions must be true. So first, f of x must be continuous on whichever area we're looking at from a to b. And not only that, but f of c must be between f of a and f of b. We're going to go way more into depth about how to actually use this theorem in the practice problems that are going to come in the next video. So please stay with us into the next video so you can learn more about how to use the intermediate value theorem coming up next. If you do need any help with this definition, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez and I'm always here to help. I